At Skillcapped, we have no shortage on guides on how to correctly play defensively or even on how to set up kills. But truthfully, if you're looking to push rating and are stuck playing in LFG, you'll understand how your experience will vary based purely on just how good or how bad your healer actually is, considering the healer is often the backbone of any team. Well, this is an issue we wanted to address, and what better way to teach you than how to solo carry your healer? The first and most obvious way to carry your healer is with utility tools, so abilities like Mass Dispel, Blessing of Sanctuary, or even Reverse Magic to name a few. But it can't be stressed enough that the ability to carry is something every single class or spec can do even if you don't have these obvious utility tools, and that's something we'll be exploring and teaching you throughout this video. The easiest and first step in order to start doing this is by understanding how compositions set up their kill windows. Take this game here. We've got a rival rated RPS coming up against Jungle Cleave. To test your knowledge, answer this fairly simple question. What is the most common way that Jungle Cleave sets up kills? The correct answer is always going to be a form of stun. So maim, intimidation, or even bash onto your healer, which is then followed up with a freezing trap. Well, hopefully you got that right, and if you did, then you're more than ready to start carrying your healer in this matchup. So watching our game, our healer gets caught into an intimidation stun, and as we all now know, a freezing trap is going to follow. It's this basic knowledge which is the key to understanding one simple carry technique. As in this situation, regardless of your class or spec, you can now look to disrupt this chain from happening. Our Shadow Priest is fortunate in the fact he has additional utility, which definitely helps, so from his position, he should now be ready to leap of faith the healer away from the incoming trap. If that isn't ready, he could instead get ready to cast Mass Dispel. Whereas if you're a DPS Shaman, this would be a great time to use Grounding Totem. If you're a Retribution, then you could Blessing of Sanctuary your healer's stun so they can run away from the trap, or if you're a Demon Hunter, you should actively be moving over to then be ready to use Reverse Magic. On the flip side though, like we mentioned, even without any standard utility tools, you can still achieve the same goal. Take the Rogue in the same game for instance, although he lacks any form of standard utility, he could be looking to grappling hook over to his healer and attempt to eat the trap. Just like we see the Shaman doing in this clip here, which is something literally any class can attempt to do. Or if possible, he could use his kidney shot to then stun the Hunter at the same time the Hunter stuns his Shaman. Again, achieving the same goal, which is to deny the CC chain. This is something that can be done by any spec with any form of crowd control. Anyway, back to our original clip. What happens is both our Priest and Rogue either lack the awareness to see the initial intimidation stun, or just don't expect the freezing trap follow up. As a result, the Hunter secures it. A few seconds after seeing the trap on his frame debuffs, our Priest then attempts to start mass dispelling. We're not quite sure how he lands this with both the Feral and the Hunter having their interrupts, but luckily he does and removes the freezing trap after 3 seconds. The whole stun into freezing trap is obviously unique to Hunters, but the point is that almost all popular crowd control based compositions have very telegraphed CC setups onto your healer that can be prevented in many situations. Take this game here from a rank 1 Shadow Priest. As a DPS, it's very easy to only focus on pure offense, which is primarily dealing damage, setting up and scoring kills, but a talent all top players have, and something you should try to hone if you want to help your healers, is watching for when enemy players are actively looking to land CC. Knowing how specs set up their crowd control is one thing, but a great tip to help with this is paying attention to enemy positioning and posturing. Take a look here. The second the enemy mage goes around the back of the pillar, his intentions become very clear. It's obvious he's looking for crowd control onto our Shadow Priest's healer, who in this case is a paladin. And unlike our Shadow Priest earlier, who looked to mass dispel once he saw the visual cue of the trap, our rank 1 Priest even is quickly ready to land an MD and stop the chain from happening. It's situations like this where if you don't have utility like that mass dispel or even grounding totem to help your healer, you should instead be in a position to attempt to interrupt the polymorph during the dragon's breath. This is obviously ideal, but it's not always going to be possible. For instance, in a well-executed RMP setup, chances are it's going to be difficult to stop that initial crowd control with either utility or standard interrupts. In these situations, your next course of action to help your healer should always be attempting to break the chain of crowd control. So, this could be stopping the follow-up polymorph in the case of RMP, or even preventing the priest from following up with a fear, which again can all be done in varying ways, even something as simple as a snare. 
So it has to be said that if you're playing a hybrid or a class with high amounts of support and utility, it definitely helps in carrying healers. But even then, from our extensive gameplay reviews that we do here at Skillcapped, a common theme we can't help but notice, and the second step in carrying your healer, is that most players do indeed know how their utility works, but the problem stems from not necessarily understanding the best times to use it. Take a look at this game here, from around the rival level rating bracket. We have DH Boomy up against Survival Hunter Affliction Lock, both with Holy Priests. Straight away, our Demon Hunter's healer gets caught into an intimidation stun, and just like we touched on earlier, a trap is coming straight after. Our question to you guys is, if you were in this Demon Hunter's shoes, would you reverse this trap? Yes or no? And why? Take this time to pause the video and quickly jump into comments and let us know. If you said the Demon Hunter should reverse the trap, then you would be very wrong. Let's assess the game state. Our Demon Hunter has Blur, his partner has Skin, and they're both at a very stable amount of health. And if worse comes to worse, our DH even has Darkness ready. The key thing here to pay attention to, though, is that they are facing an Affliction Warlock. Fast forward 30 seconds and we see the repercussions of this mistake, with the enemy Warlock getting 3 UAs out, casting Soul Rot, and popping Dark Soul, which in turn forces an abundance of defensive cooldowns from our team, as well as forcing them to have to retreat and hide behind the pillar, losing a ton of pressure and barely surviving in the process. Compare this to our high-rated Demon Hunter, MVQ. They've got pressure rolling onto the enemy Affliction Warlock, who trades his unending resolve in order to get out UA on both MVQ and his partner, as well as a Soul Rot. So now with Soul Rot and UA on himself and his Druid, what does MVQ do? Well, he just instantly trades out his reverse magic, no questions asked, in response to Soul Rot, which is one of an Affliction Warlock's strongest offensive, and just so happens to share the same CD as reverse magic, which in turn shuts down all of the Warlock's damage and prevents them from building pressure. It's situations like this where you're correctly using your utility that really carries your healer. By the way, if you enjoyed this gameplay breakdown and want to see more, we have a brand new custom course specifically to go alongside this guide at skillcap.com. It's there that you can unlock 5 additional site exclusive tutorials where we teach you exactly how you should be using the tools you have available to carry your healer like a pro, including examples on how some of the best players in the world make the most out of their utility. And of course, we have over 600 class guides and more than 1000 arena commentaries all available exclusively at skillcap.com. Anyway, back to the video. There are tons of utility spells in the game, all of which accomplish varying goals, be it reducing damage or even preventing crowd control, and to be honest, all have very broad uses. That being said, when it comes to carrying your healer, the easiest way to sum it up is that your goal should be to actively reduce the amount of cooldowns your healer or teammates would otherwise have to use. Let's take the example of a Retribution Paladin's Blessing of Sanctuary, but again, this applies to almost all utility in the game. The main point here being, just because your healer is stunned or in a CC that you can remove, it doesn't necessarily mean you should instantly use your Blessing of Sanctuary to get them out without hesitation. Instead, try to get in the habit of assessing and reading the game state. So ask yourself, will that CC lead to follow-up crowd control and can Sanctuary prevent that? Will sitting that stun force my healer to have to otherwise use a cooldown to keep themselves or my team alive? What do I lose from sanking this stun? For example, do I have to trinket for it? If so, is that worth it? And lastly, is it even worth holding on to the cooldown to begin with? For instance, is there something more important you can sank later? While this may seem a lot at first, learning and paying attention to how different specs and compositions set up their kills will make it become almost second nature. Finally, it's also very important that you learn and consider the multiple uses of each utility spell that your spec has. A few examples being a Shaman's Grounding Totem, which can obviously be used both for preventing crowd control, but also for stopping damage. A Priest's Life Grip can not only be used to grip your teammates out of harm's way and reduce the damage they take, but also be used to grip healers out of line of sight to help them avoid crowd control. Mass Dispel isn't just for crowd control, but can also be used for preventing damage, so things like removing Elemental, Shadow Priest, or even Balanced Druid Dots. There are so many uses for each spell, and you can learn more about it in our exclusive companion course at skillcap.com. Anyway guys, that was an introduction on how to carry your healer by making the most out of your utility inside of Arena. Be sure to let us know if you enjoyed the video down in the comments below, and as always, thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.